everyone. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Wow Can Cook. And today I am making Dr. Gloria's famous taco soup. Hey, Dr. Gloria, how's it going today? Hey, good morning, partner. How are you? I'm well, I'm well. Well, Happy I'll tell you, it's a nice, chilly, I love the cool weather, nice chilly weather um, in Texas this morning. And this soup sounds amazing for me to, to make today. I wish you could just kind of send some over, but <laughs> it's a little far from California to Texas. Yeah, and I got my new apron on. Thank you, Cynthia. We oh, all yeah, Cynthia, it's amazing. I have mine too, and I just didn't even have time to coordinate it to put it on this morning. Kind of hectic, but I will have it on next time. That is amazing. It's and the so quality much is than the blue one. You know, it's all embroidered. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's it that company does a quality job. Okay, so we're making taco soup, and so I've even had um, Mexican. Uh, Taco, you know, what do we call it? Food truck people that have asked me how to make the taco soup when I was in Ecuador and I did. And um, I just talked to somebody here locally that wants to know how to make it because they don't like putting tons of tomatoes in it because it takes away the flavor of the meat and the other spices. So we're making the taco soup that I made authentic uh, as much as Dr. Gloria can without tomatoes, but with a tremendous amount of flavor. So you've got onions. Do you have onions right now that you're going to be browning? Onions are here. Garlic is there. Yeah, I'm ready. Let's go. <laughs> okay, let's go. Hit it. Go ahead okay, and start so the browning. The first thing is two tablespoons of avocado oil. Right. And let's tell them why. Because in the recipe, you'll see that the reason I recommend avocado oil for something like this is because it's, it's um, taste neutral. So it picks up whatever flavors you cook with it. It's not like olive oil is not good, like in my opinion, for frying eggs, for instance. You shouldn't be using it for that anyway. So you use that. Now you're going to wait until it sizzles, until it gets shimmering. Not necessarily sizzle, but I call it shimmering. It kind of like little waves on the top. That tells you it's hot enough. Okay. So when you heat up your oil in your pot, you it's put it on medium high? Yes. Okay. I, I put I it on medium high. And then as soon as it starts shivering, dancing around in the pot a little bit, you can see the waves. Then you can throw in the onions. And so you're going to heat the onions. Uh, but don't, one thing that I wanted to warn everybody is do not season them with the salt yet. Because if you're using a bouillon cube or even the, the prepackaged bouillon, which I hope you're not using too often, um, it's already pretty salty. So don't salt this soup until towards the end so that you know if it really needs it or not. So what are you using for uh, onions? You just have plain old Spanish onions, this yellow is onions. This is one big onion. Okay, good. That's all you need. Okay, so I'm go ahead throw and, it in. Yeah, is, is it shimmering? I don't know. <laughs> okay, well, if it doesn't shimmer, maybe it'll shake, right? And if your stove, Tracy, because your stove is so much better than the one I'm having to use right now, uh, if you can take the higher heat, go ahead so that you can get them browned on the tips like we always do. Just oh, okay. make sure that so you I keep stirring. So I need to do the normal, like brown. The normal, brown. yeah. Not as brown as like for the, the mujadara that we did, but but at least a little brown on the tips. A lot of people think that all they have to do is uh, wait till the onions are translucent. You know how they get kind of like you um, almost can see through them? That's not enough to give it flavor. That's just enough to soften them. A true uh, saute has the tips that are a, a light yellow, not burnt, but a light yellow, uh, sorry, a light brown, so that they can really get that intense flavor that an onion can give you. Otherwise, it's just plain old onion. So, so while that's cooking, I wanted to tell them what I did. So instead of using a boxed chicken broth that I have in the pantry, I had this in the fridge from one of our other episodes. So I right. used two tablespoons of this with four cups of hot water to make four cups of broth. Perfect. And so was that one that you had in the refrigerator uh, a concentrate? Yeah, it's the one you told me to get. Oh, I well, the one you got. Okay. Recipe, silly. <laughs> okay, silly. All right. Da, Dr. Gloria. Okay. But I also, while you're waiting for the onions, just don't let them get too brown. I want to show... It's a beef base with bone broth. It's very concentrated. 
And one of my patients found it and told me about it. She's an avid label reader. She's been a very good student of mine. And I had to order it online at Amazon because I couldn't find it in local stores. But it is the, I was telling Tracy this morning, it's the most amazing broth I've ever had. Uh, it, it far superior to anything else I've ever bought. And so, for instance, in this taco soup, if you had it, you would use like two teaspoons. And there's something like um, 30, 38 cups of liquid it can make. It's so good that you can actually use it as a broth, like on a cold day or you're not feeling real well. It would be great to use. But, you know, Tracy's always talking about the benefits of bone broth and how much she uses it. And she's so correct because that's where you get your collagen. Remember we talked about that? Yeah. That's where you get your collagen. That's where you get all that real dense nutrition that you don't get when you just put a chicken in a pot and, and uh, you know, use the broth. It's not the same. So this is amazing because it has nothing nasty in it. It has, I'm going to read it to you. No artificial ingredients, no preservatives, gluten-free, no sugar. So there is two grams of protein in a teaspoon. Um, it is salty. Most broths are, or bouillon cubes. So be real careful with that. And um, it's absolutely amazing. It has bone broth and beef broth. And then they also have the chicken one. If you can see it here, I had it in a minute ago. What was the first one you said? The first one is beef base with beef, uh, with bone broth. <clears throat> okay, beef bone broth. The second one is chicken base with chicken bone broth. So it's amazing because it has that real deep, you know, the glace, you know, that they, that, that they use in Italy and in France for all the, the good dishes. It's boiled down for hours and this is really thick. It's like a paste. So a teaspoon or two teaspoons of, um, Either one is all you need, and then you just add water. So um, I'd really like you to try these. You and I talked about it already because they're amazing. I mean, it spoiled me, and I thank my patients because they're always label reading and we're sharing like you and I do with our members, you know, what we find that is, like, amazing. Um, I had a, a member say to me that's also on one of my teams um, for out of QHS, uh, for our humanitarian projects. And she said, I'm so glad that you and Tracy talked about the um, Palmini because she tried it. She can't have anything that is pasta, even if it's gluten-free because of her intestinal disorder. And she loved it. So see, when we can share, and we love it when our members or our patients share with us because that's the way we all learn. I didn't know about Palmini until Tracy told me. I didn't know about this broth until a patient of mine found it. The company is called called Zoop. That's adorable. Tracy That's and I, you name. should, you should, you and I should have come up with it. Z-O-U-P. So just look for Zoop broths on Amazon or in your local store and you should be able to find them. I think they have a couple more, but these are the only two I've used and tried out um, explicitly so that I could share the, the results with you. And it's amazing. I mean, I, I could spend 24 hours trying to make this and I'm not doing it because this is Okay. All so why don't you talk about this now? Why are we using annatto? Okay. Annatto is a red spice that was used by the Incan Indians as coloring. In other words, they dyed everything that was red or oranges with this annatto. It's a pod. It's, it's, not, it's like a berry inside of a pod. So just think of a, of a uh, Christmas berry, a holly berry. That's about what it looks like. And it's inside of a pod. So it, it doesn't have any um, nightshade properties. It doesn't induce inflammation. It has fabulous flavor. It tastes just like tomatoes. Um, and in usually it's in Mexican markets, Latino markets, or in the in the Mexican food section of your of your store, especially where they hang those little packages. Was yours hanging in a little package, or did you have to order it, Tracy? I had to order it. I couldn't find it. You had to order it. Yeah, I can find it in Texas, but I couldn't find it in other places. That was in Idaho. I couldn't find it. So it is um, a very intense flavor that duplicates tomato and gives it the real richness without having anything that ignites inflammation. So, and that's our goal here. So how's your onions? Okay. Good. I'm ready to add the garlic. Okay, go ahead. Add your garlic and then just stir it until it's fragrant. Doesn't have to be brown. Just until you start smelling that aroma of the cooked garlic, 
then you know that you're ready to add the beef and begin to uh, to brown it. Are you using bison like we normally do? Now I'm going to add the bison. Yes, I always do bison. I don't do beef. See the bison? Yeah, I do beef, but very rarely. I, I When I can get bison, I buy ground bison for everything. Uh, tacos, lasagna, you know, pasta. And I make the lasagna with zoodles, with the zucchini, not with pasta. So it's it's amazing. And this, I just want to mention that this taco soup, I was telling you, I think, earlier today, that if you want to make tacos the next day or two days later, once the, the liquid boils down a little bit and becomes thicker, it's like a taco um, mix for the for the tacos. I mean, it's it becomes uh, less of a soup and more of a taco mix. You can use it if you're going to make lasagna. You can use it for enchiladas or anything. When it's watery with the broth, it's a soup. As it boils down or you eat up more of the liquid, then it becomes more of a filling is the word I was looking for, a filling for like your taco. So try it. I can't eat corn tortillas. I love them. I was raised on them. But if I do, my blood sugar goes sky high. So I buy the Trader Joe's cauliflower slims, which are little round ones, a little smaller than a corn tortilla. Or you can buy the pizza dough made out and they're all made out of cauliflower and they're delicious you just warm them up in a pan and put in your filling and your lettuce and your cheese or sour cream and avocado whatever you want fold it while it's warm and you've got a taco without having the carbs of a, of a corn tortilla so how's it doing dear i'm working on browning the meat right now it will, it's going to take a minute okay so she's browning the if she's not using beef she's using bison which we really prefer but if you've got a good grass-fed organic beef that's fine if you can eat beef um you want it to brown you want it to make sure that it's browned throughout not just the outside but not overcooked you don't want it dry because you want it to be moist when you put it in with the, the rest of the ingredients to make a chili um, and then if there's any excess fat now with what Tracy's doing, there's never excess fat because with bison, you usually have to add a little bit of fat because it has no fat. It's such a lean meat. If you use a beef and it's fatty, then take a little bit of the fat off because it does get too greasy then for the soup. You can see that she's got about, I think that's about almost four cups of broth. Is that about four cups of broth? Yeah, it's four cups because that's what your recipe calls for. <laughs> right. Okay. I couldn't see the measuring cup, but I thought that's what it was. Okay. So, um, just oh, let me talk all... about this really quick. Okay. Go ahead. So I got, this is the brand that I like to get. It's organics. Okay. Of so what? It's organic corn, organic kidney beans, and organic black beans. Now I opened these cans and I rinsed everything out really well. And Good. then I put them back in the can. Okay, now that's important because uh, Tracy has mentioned this on many shows. People don't realize that corn is one of the most uh, pesticide-laden vegetables we can get. So if you don't buy anything else organic in, in canned vegetables or fresh vegetables, make sure the corn is organic. And I don't buy the brand that she has because I can't find it, but there's a wonderful organic brand from our our local family-owned grocers, it's all over Texas. Well, not all over, but most of Texas. And um, and it's phenomenal. It's H-E-B brand. So if you're anywhere in Texas, pick up some H-E-B. Um, so it's similar to yours. So you rinsed it, put it back in the can so you can just pour it in. Well, even more important than the pesticides is the GMOs because yeah, if it's organic, right. it cannot be genetically modified. So right. that's why corn, wheat, and soy are the three most genetically modified crops. And so you always, right. always, always want organic. Absolutely. You're right, because it's not GMO'd. Um, well, how is the meat doing? Is it getting, in other words, it, when there's no pink left, you can start adding everything else. Even if it's just a light brown, just want to make sure you get rid of all the pink. Okay, I'm almost there. Okay. So while, while you need another minute or so, I'd like to explain something because people keep asking me, uh, why are you so against soy? I am not against soy per se. I'm against soy if you don't have Asian DNA in your, in your blood. 
because Asian a, people with Asian DNA, of a, a, we don't know scientifically, but around 40%, 30 to 40%, you have the enzyme in your body that digests soy. I have European and South American DNA. There's no way my body would do well with soy. Doesn't mean that you would get heartburn or indigestion or GI problems. It just means your body can't break it down, which then can become a toxin. So it's not that soy per se is bad. It depends if you have the DNA of an Asian that you can actually have the ability to break it down because you've got the enzyme. Tracy and I don't tell you, she's got all kinds of European blood. She can't break it down any more than I can. But when it's fermented, like if you buy some a, a soy that's fermented, then that's okay because the digestive process has basically been done by the fermentation. So if it's fermented, um, miso, for instance, if it's fermented, you're okay. But don't buy just soy just because somebody says this is made with soy and it's healthy. It's not healthy for everyone. You should be Scientifically, they haven't proven the percentage, but they know it should be around 30 to 40 percent Asian. And then your body has no trouble digesting it. And that's why a lot of Asians that come to the States end up with cancer. And they didn't in their home country because they're eating our fast food and the vice versa. When people from here go to Asia and they start eating soy, they ended up with cancer, a lot, especially prostate and breast cancer according to my research, because they start eating a lot of soy and they can't digest it. And because they don't have symptoms, they don't realize that it's being uh, a toxic that is in there, a toxin that's in there that isn't being digested. So when it's not digested, it becomes toxic. So you're ready. So next, just stir in all the, um, the herbs and spices. So tell us what you're putting in as you do. You've got the, is well, that I the have it all mixed. So I have two tablespoons of anato. Two teaspoons okay. of cumin, a half a teaspoon of salt, and a half a teaspoon of black pepper. One teaspoon of oregano powder is best. Okay, again, I'm back with that organics brand. I'll put in a teaspoon of oregano. Right, one teaspoon of oregano. That gives it that true south of the border flavor. Yum, I thought and oregano was Italian. <laughs> it is, but they use it a lot in, in South America. You can put your pepper in now, and then you can adapt it later uh, and add some more if you feel that you need it. Just don't add salt until you get done. And once it's all stirred in, you can then throw in your, literally throw in your uh, cans of vegetables, which is one can of organic corn, one can of kidney or navy beans. Which beans are you using? Kidney beans. Okay, and then did you have black beans as well? Black beans right here. Okay. Okay, okay that's all stirred up. And that's, okay, so how is, have you added the broth yet? No? No, it's right here. Okay, that's okay. It can be added at any point at this time. But now go ahead and add the broth. Okay, once you add the broth, you should put up the fire a little bit, the flame, so that you can get it to a low roaring boil, and then you just let it cook until it starts reducing this liquid a little bit, um, and then you end up with soup. I mean, it's that simple. Then you go ahead and garnish it, and we'll show you that um, a little later. What about the lime juice? The lime juice goes in at the end. You can put it in now, but you can put it in at the end. I like it both places. Not everybody does. Okay, I'm going to put it in now. I that way it's one less love. thing to worry about later. <laughs> right, right. What about the cilantro? That goes in the last 15 minutes, always. That's a rule of thumb in Dr. Gloria's kitchen. You want the cilantro the last 15 minutes of your cooking time. Otherwise, you really lose the intensity of the cilantro flavor. So you don't want to put it in now and um, just let it cook until it, it cooks down a little bit in a low roaring boil. You can even cover it after you've got a, a, a boil. After you've reached a boil, you can cover it, lower the flame a little bit, and then just let it cook until it's, until it's uh, thickened a little bit. It's ready then. And then you can go ahead and add the cilantro the last 15 minutes. So I cook mine a lot longer than most people. 
I cook mine about an hour, sometimes a little longer if it's a slow cooker. And then, um, and of course, uh, typical Dr. G usually cooks it the day before because everything just blends so much better. So um, you have some, some um, toppings, some garnishes that you're going to use once we serve it. And I think that's about all you can do. Just let it cook until it boils down a little bit. Taste it then for salt. Okay. And then add the salt according to what you like and add more pepper. It's got to have some good pepper in it. Good amount okay. of black pepper to give it that spunk. Okay. I put a half a teaspoon in already. So we'll see. Yeah. You should see what I do. Because <clears throat> I can't eat chili. And so that's how I get my, my heat in my chili. Uh, and if you want a lot of heat, remember, you can use white pepper. That'll give you a lot of heat. That's what I okay. did use is white pepper, a half a teaspoon of white oh. pepper. Okay, that's good. what your recipe says. Well, that's for the spunk, but just be careful that people know that, that when you use white pepper, you use it and you taste it and you go slow. I have black pepper on mine and you can use white if it's if you want it spicier. Yeah, that's what okay, I do. Well, my husband's going to be the one eating this because you know me and beans don't go well together. Yeah. Right. And a lot of people can't. And if, if you can't do the beans, make the chili with everything else and just leave the beans off. If you can do corn, if you can do whatever. I mean, I've even used zucchini when I had one left over and put it in at the end, you know, just so it gets nice and soft, cut it up in little cubes. It's make it your own recipe with what you can do and what your dietary requirements um, really are, because you can't make a generic recipe for everybody adapted to what you can tolerate but this way is um especially with the um with the ground beef or bison uh is really what a taco mix is all about so once it boils down then you you know you could always drain the beans and make a taco mix out of it tracy with a cauliflower tortilla ah i have well, patience right now it's i like have patience at boiling so when i simmer it do i cover it or do i leave it uncovered when it's lower the flame so it stays at a real low roaring boil and then cover it okay then i guess we'll okay. be back we'll be back when it's for the taste test and for the garnishing so we're back for day two and i am so excited to show you this beautiful bowl dr g Lots and lots of cilantro, so it might be kind of hard to see, but it is very thick, which I love. Um, but yeah, it looks delicious. Okay, so did it get soupy after you cooked it like a soup, like a taco soup, and then it thickened later? Because remember, I was I was sharing with everyone that it's a really good taco mix uh, to put into actually, like I use it in a cauliflower tortilla. Um, did it get soupy first, like a soup, and then it got thick, or how, what happened? Yeah, when I cooked it yesterday, it was soupy, and then um, we had it for dinner last night, and then I stuck it in the refrigerator, and then today when I warmed this up and the, on the stove, it was thick, so. Okay, so what was the, what was the family op opinion? I know your hubby's a good taste tester. Um, you know what? My husband loved it, too, so, yeah. Oh, good, because he's, he's good at... He's good at telling you what he likes and what he doesn't. So that's great. Oh, yeah. He's very good at telling me what he likes and what he doesn't. Okay. So <laughs> so how long did you cook it overall initially? Oh, gosh. I don't know. Just whatever the recipe said. Was it an hour, 45 minutes, something yeah, like that? Yeah, an hour, about an hour. But remember, I cook it overnight. So today it's better than it was yesterday, I bet you. Can you yeah. tell the difference? I haven't even tasted it. <laughs> oh, well, taste it and tell us. Okay, let's see. Because it does it does have a much deeper, rich flavor the next day. It mm -hmm. completely changes. Mm -hmm. So what's what's the verdict? Thumbs up. It's delicious. And you can tell the difference, can't you? Or can you? From I cannot. The, 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 you cannot. Okay, because I can. It's a big, <laughs> it's a big difference the next day. I know, but you know, usually you can tell and go, yeah, there's something that's really good today, you know, as a leftover. But just remember that in an omelet, it's amazing. You mm. just make your omelet, put it inside. If you want to put cheese on top, which I always do. I actually had an omelet this morning, but not with that. And then I just stuff it in as an omelet. It's that's delicious. You can, and, and then with cilantro and a little sour cream or yogurt on top, it's yummy. So when you make a pot of that, 
you have several different meals that you can make out of it and it's all wholesome i mean we made it with ground bison and all the you know all the nice herbs and and the um achiote or the anato powder that is the one that substitutes the flavor of tomatoes without igniting inflammation so good job so your hubby liked it well we got a taste tester approval so that's good yeah that's we good. did good we did good. good so thank you for another delicious recipe and I just want to say bon appetit to me. Bon appetit to you too, dear heart. <laughs> Buen provecho in Spanish. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.